Hi there. Thanks for joining me in this video in which we'll be going over the new rendering features and improvements shipping with Momset Toolbag 5. We've got lots of new additions to cover, from our new hybrid rendering mode, triplanar projection, the new bevel shader, and much more. We've also completely overhauled both our raster and ray traced renderers. This has massively improved performance as well as opening up our technology for new rendering features in the future. So without further ado, let's get going. First up, we have the hybrid rendering mode. This is a brand new mode that balances the raster renderer's interactivity and responsiveness with the ray tracer's image quality and fidelity. To switch to the hybrid mode, we can use the new render mode buttons in the toolbar. The middle one will enable hybrid mode, whilst the buttons on the left and the right are for raster and ray tracing mode respectively. There's also hotkeys for switching, Control and R will switch to ray tracing mode, and Control Shift and R is for hybrid mode. Settings specific to hybrid rendering can be adjusted inside the render object. The first thing I want to mention is the light sampling quality, which can be tweaked to improve performance of the viewport without affecting the final render quality. High will use the full viewport resolution for each lighting pass. This will produce the best image quality but at a higher performance cost. Low and medium both reduce the resolution of the lighting passes, which can improve the performance of complex scenes or for machines using older graphics cards. As with the ray tracing mode, users can set the amount of bounces to improve GI results. In hybrid mode, we also have the option to specify the specular and refraction bounces. As for denoising, in hybrid mode, we can independently denoise the different lighting passes. Again, these only apply to the viewport and will need separately configuring for any image or video outputs. This allows users to have higher denoising in the viewport to aid visibility, whilst facilitating the option to disable or reduce the denoising strength for the final renders. One for our hard surface lovers. Toolbag 5 sees the introduction of our bevel shader. For use in the ray tracing mode, the bevel shader rounds over your models to give them a more natural appearance and remove the obvious CG look of hard edges. This drastically simplifies the modeling process, allowing artists to create detailed hard surface models without needing to use the time consuming subdivision or face weighted techniques. To apply the bevel shader to your asset, first ensure ray tracing is enabled. Then navigate to the materials area of the UI. Select your material and change the surface type from normals to bevel. Users can specify the bevel width in the settings. The size and prominence of your bevels will dictate how many bevel samples to use. Lower numbers will be sufficient for smaller bevels but more prominent ones will require more samples. As bevels are controlled via material settings, users can create a variety of material types all with different bevel sizes. For example, on this hard metal surface, I have my bevels set quite tight. In contrast, the bevels on this record player are softer and wider due to the material being a soft plastic. Another great feature of this shader is its effects on intersections. Bevels will be created where objects intersect, creating the impression of welds without having to use complex Boolean operations. However, if this isn't the desired effect, it can be turned off by splitting up the mesh into submeshes and enabling the bevel same surface checkbox. These bevels can also be baked down into a texture map but we will cover this more in our what's new in baking video. And now something for our character artists. Toolbag 5 now supports groom content when imported via an alembic file. This will import your asset as a groom object with the splines contained within. Inside the groom settings, we can see there's a few parameters that we can play around with. 
the tessellation will affect how smoothed out the splines appear, though this won't affect linear splines. Strand width increases the thickness of the splines. Strand density allows users to alter the density of the hair. However, density cannot be increased past a value of 100%, so make sure you export your asset with the maximum density that you need. There's also hair tip and hair root settings, allowing users to independently control both ends of the strands. Toolbag 5 also comes with a new hair shader for improved hair rendering. This greatly increases the quality of reflections and scattering for hair and fur, and can be used with groom objects and traditional hair geometry. The hair shader can be enabled by selecting the hair mode in the reflection panel. You can see we now have two additional parameters. The radial roughness affects the shininess across the width of the hair strands, the existing microsurface roughness can be used in conjunction with the radial roughness. This will control the roughness over the length of the strands. If working with traditional geometry-based hair cards, direction or flow maps can also be supplied. We've introduced tinting of groom objects with our new albedo gradients. Users can specify a gradient from root to tip. You can use this feature by itself or applied on top of an albedo texture for subtle tinting. Our hair shader also supports secondary reflections, which can be applied in the clear coat panel. As before, open the drop down menu and select the hair option. These secondary reflections can also be tinted in the clear coat reflectivity panel, and you can then either supply a specular map or tint them with a solid color. The intensity can also be controlled, allowing for some nice stylization effects. It's worth noting that the hair shader does work best with our ray tracing render mode, so it is recommended to enable ray tracing for your final renders. Not forgetting something new for our environment and landscape artists, Toolbag 5 is introducing the heavily requested layered materials. Layered materials allow artists to create complex surfaces from multiple layers and blends. If combined with tiling textures, this allows artists to easily tackle large surfaces and assets, and is especially powerful when used with triplanar mapping. Layers can be accessed in the first panel of the material settings. Layered materials allow users to add multiple sub-materials to a base material in the editor. You can supply your own textures as normal, or library materials can also be added on to new material layers. It's always good practice to rename them as well. You can then mask or blend them in a variety of ways. The first blend method is masking. Users can supply a packed texture mask which uses the RGB and alpha channels to mask the different material layers. Multiple masks can be added with this button. This allows users to use numerous masks in combination with an almost limitless amount of material layers. Users can specify which mask each layer should use. Simply select the chosen layer and choose the mask number from the drop down list. You can also set which channel to use, and also specify which UV set it should read from. Multiple layers, masks and UV sets can be used to build up convincing wear and storytelling in your textures. The vertex colour masking mode allows you to use the mesh's vertex colours as masks. These vertex colours can be applied in your chosen DCC and will be imported in with your meshes. Vertex colours are comprised of a red, green, blue and alpha channel, which means artists can use up to four material layers on top of the base layer, each of which will be mapped to one of the vertex colour channels. Height masking uses a height map to control the material masking. When creating a new material layer in this masking mode, each layer will be automatically assigned to a value range in the height map. 
With layered materials, the base layer controls the texture projection and shading mode for all child material layers. If we click on a sub layer, we can see that the shader options have been replaced with blend modes. Using multiply, overlay or screen in the albedo channel can be useful for adding color variation for things like dirt or patinas. Using overlay for normal maps allows the normal information and detail from underlying layers to show through. Each map type can be disabled individually as well. This gives artists more flexibility on how the textures in each layer interact with the layers underneath them. Building up masked layers like this is a technique especially useful for creating complex surfaces, such as terrain or buildings, where bespoke textures would be time consuming and less performant. Our introduction of triplanar mapping will be an exciting new feature for any artists who work with tiling textures. Triplanar mapping allows users to seamlessly project materials onto their assets, regardless of the quality of or absence of UVs. Triplanar projection can be enabled on tiling textures in the texture section of your material. As with traditional UV projection, the tiling amount can be controlled. Triplanar materials will automatically fit to the bounding box of the meshes that they're applied to. If you need to edit this, you can fine tune the position of the projection with the handy transform widget. Triplanar materials are especially useful for adding materials to highly detailed meshes, such as sculpts, CAD models, or scans, without requiring the time-intensive UV unwrapping. Conveniently, Toolbag 5 comes with a large library of tiling materials. This gives artists a vast array of surface types to use with the triplanar projection method. They can also be partnered with the vertex color layering that we mentioned in the previous segment to create a completely UV-free, non-destructive layered material pipeline. Another projection method we've added is UDIM support for materials. UDIMs have been part of the standard pipeline in film for a while now, but are starting to be adopted in video games now as well. Our UDIM support allows users to load textures from external texturing or baking software. As with the triplanar projection, the UDIM workflow can be accessed in the material settings with the texture panel dropdown. Click on the map slot that you wish to load. So here I'm just going to select the first albedo map in the set. Notice the naming conventions. I'm using an underscore and a numbered suffix to define the amount and the order of the UDIMs. Artists do not need to manually select or define the amount of UDIMs as Toolbag 5 will handle this based on the naming conventions. Alternatively, if there's multiple texture map sets, you can select all of them in your file browser and drop them onto the material sphere. This will populate all of the map channels with the corresponding UDIM sets. Toolbag 5 introduces procedural skies as an alternative to our HDRI skies found in the library. This is most useful for recreating natural outdoor lighting in your scenes and is something that environment artists and architectural visualizers will find particularly useful. To add a procedural sky to your scene, first add a sky object. In the source panel of the settings, you have the option to switch from image to procedural. This will expose a bunch of settings we can play around with. The color of the sun and the sky are automatically determined by time factors. Time of day will change the sun's position and color to mimic that of the real world. The month and day parameters also impact the sunlight. Winter months, for example, will see the sun rise later, hang lower and set sooner, whereas summer months will have the sun higher up in the sky and present for longer. Any additional color tweaks can be made with the white balance, tint and saturation sliders. The sun brightness will control the intensity of the sun area light whilst the sun scale will determine the area light size. 
and can be increased to further soften shadows. The haze parameter will mimic the effect of a thicker atmosphere due to fog or cloud cover, for example. Artists can also set the ground colour with these two colour fields, which will create a gradient from the horizon line. When it comes to creating the perfect final shot, tone mapping is just as important and so we've added AGX as a new tone mapping option. To play around with AGX, navigate to your chosen camera object. In the settings, find the colour panel. You can switch to the AGX tone mapper with this drop down menu. AGX strikes the balance between highlight and detail retention whilst creating subtle and natural looking images. AGX tone mapped scenes are closer to how we perceive lighting and colours in real life, compared to the higher contrast tone mappers like Hale and Aces. It is worth noting that AGX will be the new default tone mapping for any newly added cameras in Toolbag 5. So that concludes our update video on all of the new rendering features and improvements in Toolbag 5. If you haven't checked it out already, we also have a what's new in texturing video which will take you through all of Toolbag 5's new texturing and material features. Until next time, thanks for tuning in and take care.